All right, so unless you're living under a rock, you've probably seen ASCII art before. And for those of you that haven't seen it, well, I'm sorry, but I can explain it pretty quick for you. Traditionally, images are represented by pixels, but instead with ASCII art, instead of using pixels for each of the individual parts of the image, it's actually going to be an entire ASCII character. And ASCII characters are the character encoding set from zero to 255, so one single byte can represent one character. So why am I making a video about ASCII art? Well, recently I've been talking talking about projects that you can create as a beginner programmer that would help you learn how to program. And I wanted to demonstrate with an ASCII art generator that something as simple or as silly as an ASCII art generator can actually teach you a lot about programming and we can keep building and extending upon it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make your very own ASCII art generator. And by the time we're done, you'll have some ideas about how you can go extend this modify it and make it your own so that you can go learn new technologies, new coding practices, or just have your own spin on an ASCII art generator. So with that said, let's jump over to Visual Studio and start looking at some of the code. All right, so I'm here in Visual Studio and I just have a console application that actually is a functioning ASCII art generator. But what I wanted to do is actually walk through some of the process for how I put this together. And the reason that I want to show you this and explain it is because, like I was saying, I think that there's a lot of learning opportunities when you start building things. And even though I've been programming for over 20 years now, there were still things that I got to learn and play with, different concepts in this small little project that I thought were valuable. So to start, when we think about an ASCII art generator, we're going to need some source image. So just to have this kind of coded right at the top here, I have from line 3 till 11. It's a bit of a hack, but what I have instead of just actually passing in arguments, so that's what this args keyword is for, I'm actually just directly assigning it because I was being lazy. I could absolutely make it so that when I start debugging this, I could pass in from Visual Studio the startup parameters. But I was just playing around with a bunch of different files, like you can see from line 3 till 6. That's why there's some lines commented out. So the file that I have referenced to start is just a happy face image that I got from the internet. And this is just a quick check that if I wasn't hacking around like this, that on the command line you would need to pass in one path to a file. And we could do other checks, like if the file exists or validating the file and all of that, but we're not going to cover that right now. The next part of making this code work is actually loading up that file. So we just have a, a file stream here. And beyond that, what we're going to be doing is essentially calling into some of these classes that I'm going to walk through in just a moment. So once we have the stream loaded up for that image, we're going to pass it into these other classes to do all of the work. And then really we're done at that point. So all of the magic happens in the other classes. Okay, my first pass at working through this is actually using the system.drawing namespace. Now, historically, system.drawing is a Windows-only package, so this code that we're looking at right here isn't actually going to go running on Linux systems. And Visual Studio actually tells us that when we're looking at the squigglies for under bitmap and things like that. In Visual Studio, as I hover over that, it's actually telling me that, you know, this code may not work on all platforms. So as I was writing this in my head, I went, oh crap, I haven't really had to think about this because I haven't been doing cross-platform stuff with system.drawing ever. And the last time I used system.drawing was essentially when I was working in Windows Forms applications. So yes, I might be dating myself a little bit there, but that's the last time I had to use this. But at least it's what I was familiar with to get started. Now, the way that this class works is that we have a set of ASCII characters that we're going to be representing our pixels with. So from left to right, we have something that's more dense to something that's less dense. So the way that this would work is the left side is darker representation and the right side is lighter all the way until we have a space, which would be essentially like nothing is there. We take the input stream that we created from the other part of the program that we were just looking at, pass it into a new bitmap, which is from the system.drawing namespace. And then this code here actually isn't perfect and has a lot to be desired, I suppose, but we need to be able to scale down the image accordingly. So uh, some things that we'd want to consider are how much real estate do we actually have to work with in the console, right? So if you had a 1920 by 1080 picture, can we actually jam that whole thing in the console without resizing it? Probably not very well. So I just had some you know, hacked in logic to scale it down by um, by a factor of 20 here. 
and we could do other things and we probably should do other things with the aspect ratio. So that's not being handled in this first pass of the code that I wrote. And then another thing that I wanted to work with and try out, which ultimately I've ended up removing in the later variations of this, but I figured we might as well set the console size when this is output because when you don't do it and the console's not big enough, it actually just looks like a total mess when all the characters are written out. So if we can size it accordingly, then you can actually see the ASCII art in the way that it's intended to be represented. This next part of the program from line 23 all the way to line 35 is essentially the bulk of the logic that this program has to use. And the way that this is going to work is two loops that we're going to have, and you can see them here on line 24 and 26. So these two lines right here. And how this works is that we need to loop across the height first and then the width. Um, because the inner loop is going to be running more frequently in this case, right? So we want to be going, you know, starting on row zero, right? So that's the height, this rows. And then on row zero, we need to print every column, which is represented by the width. So we're going to be going from top left all the way across the screen. And then once we're done that row, we would append a new line, right? So we'd go to the next row. Height would increment by one. And then we would go print all the columns in the next row. So that's the flow of the logic that we have with this loop. And that's just because if you had to go down first and back up, doing that in a console would be kind of ridiculous when there's a really easy approach to just being able to basically append characters right to the console. So no fanciness if we go top left across and then down rows. The body of this for loop is actually where we're going to be grabbing the colors that we want to map to the ASCII characters. And I just put some things on new lines there to make it a little bit more readable. But the first part here, we're actually getting the pixel color from the image based on the X and Y coordinates that we have. And then from there, we're going to be grayscaling it. So we have some magic constants here. You can play with these as you see fit. But the idea is just that we're mapping the colored pixels to a gray value. And once we have that gray value, what we can do is actually map that to an ASCII character that we've defined, again, up above here. Um, so a gray value is essentially going to be from the scale of, you know, if it were black, essentially, it would be this at symbol. And if it were white, it would be a space. And the cool thing about how this is operating is that you can go add more ASCII characters. So if you wanted to have more resolution in the different types of characters you were using, you could go add elements to this array. And the last part is that we're just going to be using a string builder to append the characters as we're going. And if you're thinking about this and optimizations and what future iterations of this could look like, I mean, I did start with actually just a string that I was concatenating, but um, if you've been playing around with strings and performance and memory usage in C-sharp, you'll know that just doing string plus equals another string, um, especially across two loops, and depending on how many characters you're dealing with, it's just not really effective. It's going to be making copies of those strings in memory as it's going, so it's just really bad on performance in general. So a string builder is definitely a step up but perhaps we could be looking at things like character arrays and seeing if spans could help us here. But I haven't gone to benchmark any of this yet. That is for a follow-up. And if you're curious and you want to build your own, you could actually try benchmarking this as well. But really, that's just the code that we have. And once we have this ASCII builder to string, we can go write that value right to the console. And that should be our actual picture. So let's go ahead and run this and see what the output looks like. And like I said, we have a happy face here, so this is actually pretty awesome. We have this face that is basically mapped to the emoji, just uh, obviously scaled up pretty high. And you can see based on the size of the font, right, with this message at the bottom of the screen that this is actually a pretty big face. It's taking up half my monitor that's 48 inches, so it's uh, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty enormous on the screen. It's kind of funny. But yeah, it's a very simple program that lets us output that. But one tweak that I want to call out in the code that's currently running versus what I was just showing you is actually the spacing of the characters. So this is actually really bothering me throughout the creation of this ASCII art generator. But something that's really important to note is that the actual width of the characters versus the height of the lines is not equal. So if we were just to have one character across the screen, right, representing one pixel, and then we want to go down representing a pixel in each new row, they're actually not scaled the same way that you might expect. So the height of a line is actually greater than the width of the characters. 
So if you take a really close look, especially if I zoom in here, you'll notice that everything is actually doubled up. And it's not coincidence, it's not just that that's how the pixels worked out, but I actually had to go write two characters for every single character that we wanted to have printed out as a pixel. And the result of that, it, was a, it would actually scale the width and the height to be more appropriate because otherwise every picture that I would generate was just super skinny, so about half the size. And I thought I had some aspect scaling issues with how my pixels were being pulled out, but then I realized I wasn't even aspect scaling to begin with, so I couldn't have messed it up. It was always going to be exactly the right aspect ratio. So truly it just had to do with the output into the console. And that might be something you want to keep in mind because if your output that you're going to be using is not exactly just a console, maybe you want to represent this some other way. Maybe you don't want to double up the characters. So you do have to think about the actual width of the characters versus the height of them as well. All right, now I'm going to jump over to a very similar class, and this is just the second iteration of the ASCII art generator that I created. And this one actually does not use system.drawing because I wanted to make sure that what I was going to release would be available on Linux and Windows as well. So using this library, we do get cross-platform usage. And again, the algorithm is going to look extremely similar, right? So we have the ASCII characters. What we do need to do here, though, is actually load up an image and then based on the format of that image, we're just gonna clone it so that we have it as this RGBA32. And that format, the actual type changes for image here. I know I'm using var, so it might not be obvious, but we get an image with a type parameter of RGBA32. And the reason that we need that, it's subtle, but if I scroll down a little bit further, again, this algorithm is almost the exact same that you saw before, but when we pull out the pixel, which is right here, we can't do this on a normal image type that comes from image sharp, which is the library I'm using. But if it's an RGBA 32 image, then we get this double indexer to be able to pull out the pixel color. So again, doing that clone that we saw at the top of this actually allows us to pull out the pixel color. Otherwise, this part of the algorithm is the exact same. So I won't touch on it because we just did. And the part at the bottom that looks a little bit different is that I started to change the API of this a little bit. So again, reflecting on why this might be an interesting project for newer folks is I got to do one iteration of it. And then once I had it working, I said, okay, well, I can clean up the API a little bit more to something that I would like, which is give me a string and then also give me the dimensions that we're expecting for this ASCII art. And sometimes you don't know that you want these other types of information coming out of your API until you start working with it. So for me, it truly was an iterative approach to be able to see if I could improve this. The other part that changed, if you recall, I was talking about aspect ratio a little bit. I did introduce this aspect ratio kind of scaling here, but one thing that's not actually called out is that I'm not taking into account how far down we actually need to scale this. So again, I have a hard-coded by 20 here for the width, and then I'm just kind of scaling the height to be by the aspect ratio that was uh, the original one from the image. So is 20 the right number here? I don't know. For every image, probably not. For the ones I was playing with, it did seem to work just so I could fit it on my screen. But there are some optimizations we could absolutely do, like figuring out what an optimal output size is, and then having the user input that um, so that they have their own preference there, and then we can scale the image accordingly to match that output size. So again, that could totally be an extension that you want to go build for this. Instead of just giving it an image path, you can say, what's the source image? And then how wide or how tall do you want this image to be when it's output? Okay, now that I've shown you both implementations of a system.drawing ASCII art generator and an image sharp ASCII art generator, I wanted to show you how I ended up refactoring this even further for no good reason, except just to kind of play around with the code and understand it a little bit better. So what I decided to do was, well, in both my implementations, I kind of showed you that this algorithm existed and it was almost identical, right? I ended up improving the aspect ratio part and I ended up having this part at the end that changed, but otherwise this whole loop that was in the middle was identical. The only difference was that how I was getting the pixel between the types for system.drawing and image sharp looked different. 
So what I decided to do was actually pull this algorithm out into its own class, which I just called a generator in this case. And then I actually have an interface for an image source. And what's really cool about this is depending on which implementation I want to use, system.drawing or image sharp, I actually have a different implementation for I image source. So if I press control F12 in Visual Studio, um, it will pull up this part at the bottom that lets me go pick between which classes. So I have a GDI image source, and this is going to be for system.drawing. So you can see that it has a width, a height, aspect ratio, and then this get pixel part. And all of this is really just kind of calling into the base stuff that we already had available. So it's just a really thin wrapper around it. And the same thing if I go to the image sharp one, where we have this image RGBA32, like I was talking about, and then we have the width, the height, and the aspect ratio, but getting pixel works because we have that image RGBA32. So I have two implementations of this interface, and that means that when we want to go call the code inside of this generator, we just pass in any one of them, and now this code is totally agnostic to which type of image source you'd like to use. All right, so to summarize, we had a really quick implementation of an ASCII art generator in C Sharp. As you can see, it's very simple. It's really only coming down to two loops that we go from the height, so we get all the rows, and then the inner loop is going to be the column, so going across the width. And as we pull out each individual pixel, we're mapping that pixel's color to grayscale, and then picking a character that represents a different amount of density, right? So the at symbol was the most dense to a space, which is clearly empty, and then mapping that grayscale value to that character. And then once we have that, we format a full string with that and put it right to the console. So the other things that I touched on in this video were just that I had two completely different implementations using the system.drawing namespace, and then image sharp as a Linux supported library that we could also use. And then from there, I walked you through how I refactored my code to actually be able to have the core algorithm and then sort of pass in with an interface the different implementations that I just mentioned. So still lots of things to be desired and that's the case with a lot of these really simple projects when we're playing around with them. So for sure we could do things like aspect scaling, we could have an output uh, size selection that the user could input some parameters. And something else I wanted to call out is that yeah this is just a console application that I have running on my computer but What's stopping you from taking this type of code and making a web service for it, right? What if you went and made an ASP.NET Core application where someone could upload a photo to your server and then server side, you go create this ASCII art and pass it back to the user. You could have a whole UI for it where they could put in the, you know, the information for the output size and all of that. You could have toggles to make it so that maybe it's formatted for like a console, like I was showing you earlier with the different uh, width of the characters versus the height. So you could have options for that. Maybe you could make it colorized so it could output to something like HTML and you could actually drop in ASCII art as HTML that's all colored and stuff. Like there's so many cool options that you could do here and extend this. And I think that when we look at projects like this, especially from the perspective of learning, you're only limited by your creativity. So if you're thinking about the different things that you want to go learn, the different technologies, if you start with a project like this, you can start to think about how you might want to go learn those technologies and apply them to the project. So I've already mentioned things like a web service. So you have ASP.NET that could be used here. You get front end and back end development opportunities, cloud hosting. What if you want to store some of this stuff in a database for caching and things like that? So many options. And I think that that's why working on projects like this can be super exciting, even if they're not set up to try and generate you a ton of money or anything like that. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you try out making your own ASCII art generator and let me know in the comments if you try and what you end up coming up with. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you later.